Okay, starting turn number three of Dungeons & Dragons, The Legend of Drizzt. Alright, so uh, Drizzt is going to start out the turn. And Drizzt is currently adjacent to the Drow Duelist. Now... So we have this ability, which is nice. All right, so yeah, our choices here are pretty easy because the only thing out on the board right now is the Drow Duelist. So Drizzt is going to take a shot at the uh, the Drow Duelist using his at will power, Icing Death. So he's going to get a plus six on this attack. Drow Duelist has an AC of 16, so Drizzt needs to get a 10 or better. If he misses, he can have a second attack action because he has Expert Combatant. So. So in this sense, it's almost like rolling with advantage. Um, let me just see if there's anything else. Um, no, nothing else going on. So we'll roll up the dice in our hand a little bit and drop it in the tray. And he got a an eight. And what is this? Six is 14. So, ow, ow we miss. So 8 and 6 is 14, the Drow Duelist has an AC of 16, so we miss, but using Expert Combatant, he'll have another go at it. So roll the dice a little bit, and drop it in. And that time he hits, 18, so now the Drow Duelist goes down, and we have enough experience now to cancel an encounter. Alright, so Drow Duelist is gone, take him off the board, put him over here our pile of monsters in the waiting room and let's update so Drizzt did this he attacked without moving so he gets to draw treasure so let's take care of that right now and what does he get play immediately place this card face up on top of either the encounter deck or the monster deck the next time a card would be drawn from the chosen deck, discard this card instead. Okay. So, I tend to, I don't know, encounters haven't been too bad to us. Man, I cannot pick these cards up. All right, finally. So, do I want to put this on the encounter or the monster? So, when we explore, because we haven't moved yet, we, we, we know we're going to draw a monster, that's guaranteed. We may not draw an encounter. Let me think. Let's put it... Um, I don't really know. Let's just go... Let's put it on the encounter. Okay, so now Driss is going to take his move action. And uh, he'll move here. Actually, let's have him move over here. We have this wall here. All right, so he's going to explore that way. Actually, we'll put him here to ha have it less ambiguous. He's going to explore right here. So you're going to grab this tile, and it's a white tile, so no encounter. All right, so let's update for Drizzt. So he did move. He is exploring. Got a white tile. Don't know the monster yet, but there will be no encounter. And the Drow Duelist is gone. Alright, so let's draw a monster. And we're going to get a Feral Troll. Four hit points. Wow. Wow. And it does three damage and a move. Wow. This is a tough guy. This isn't even the advanced cards. All right, so we we'll grab the Feral Troll. I do like that it's a larger mini. Pretty good mini. And we'll place it on the mushroom stack, although it's pretty much just taking up the entire hallway. All right, so we got the Feral Troll. And uh, no villain, no encounter to activate, 
So now the feral troll will activate. Yikes. So if the feral troll is within a tile, it moves adjacent to the closest hero and attacks that hero with a nasty claw. After the attack, pass this card to the player on your right. Oh, wow. So this feral troll kind of is like a villain that's going to hit everybody. All right, so he's just going to step forward. It doesn't specify that he has to go to our tile, so we'll just move him forward. Now he's going to attack with a nasty claw. Plus eight on that attack. You know what? When a monster within a tile would activate, let me go ahead and use this because it's not too late to take that back. So I'm gonna say instead of activating, uh, he did not he did not actually activate because because of the cloud of darkness. But now we pass this card over to Bruner. So now this becomes Bruner's monster essentially. So I guess the way I'll handle this is by. I'm just going to put an X through here, so now this will be under Bruner's turn. And that will be up here. That's going to get a little confusing, but I think I'll be able to manage it. Okay, so that will be the end of Driz's uh, villain phase. Okay, so now Bruner's going to activate, and the first thing that's going to happen, he's going to take one damage from the poison. So that's going to bring him down to an eight. Now... I think there was something else here that he had. Uh, your hero is cursed. And so at the end of our hero phase, so we'll take a damage at the end of our hero phase to get rid of that as well. So let me actually place that up here with him so I remember to do that. All right, so it's Bruner's turn. So he can move up to five. So let's see, that would take him, and he can move, we can move through heroes. We can't stop on the same square they're in, but we can move through them. So one, two, three, four, yeah, so he can easily get up to that troll. And that's not considered a narrow passage, so we don't get one of those negative four ACs. So, what's his strong stuff? This card starts with three power strike tokens on it. Once each time your hero hits an adjacent monster, you can remove one power strike. If you do, the attack deals an extra damage. Okay. And let's use that again. Because that's just a free ability, so we're going to flip this over. We're going to grab the... Let me just check it again. So look at the top two tiles of the dungeon tile stack. Yeah, so this is like just a free action. So we're going to flip this over. We're going to take two tiles, just like we did before. We've got that one and that one. So let's discard this one because it's a volcanic vent. So we'll put that one back on top. And now this one goes on bottom. So, so it goes there. All right, so Brunner is going to... All right, so Brunner's going to move up here, adjacent to the troll. Like so. All right, so he did not do this. He moved. Now he's going to use his attack... And I'm going to say he's going to use one of these power strikes. So I have to put a marker on there. Let me actually grab three markers. I'll just use these hit point things to keep track of that. And we'll just grab two of them because he's going to use one right now. So once, e once each time your hero hits an adjacent monster, you can remove one power strike. Okay, that's assuming that we hit. We only remove it if we hit. All right, so Brunner's going to take a shot at hitting the uh, troll with his notched axe. Okay. 
Roll the dice a little bit, drop it in the tower. It bounced out. I'm not going to count that. There we go. It's three, very unfortunate. So that's going to mean to be a miss, I'm sure, because the other yeah, troll, well, it's not, it doesn't have a high AC, but it's high enough that we missed. Um, so that actually means we do have three of those on here because we missed. But we'll go ahead and use our lucky hit as well. So he's, we're going to flip this over. We're going to take. We're going to use lucky hit to just reroll. Yeah, because we want to get rid of this troll. And that's a 16, so that'll do it. Even without the uh, plus seven, that'll hit. And we're going to use the power strike thing to do one additional damage to the troll. So the troll is now down to two. So let me put a, a marker there, and I'll grab one more of those. So the troll has been hit twice. All right, now... So we attacked, we did not kill, so we do not get treasure, and I'm going to say we're not going to explore. I don't think we can, even if we wanted to. So no tile, no new monster. Um, well, okay, so the uh, so at the end of the, we have a couple things here. So at the end of the turn, at the end of his hero phase, we're going to discard this and take one damage. So that's going to take us down to seven, but at least we're, we got rid of the curse. And then we have to deal with that poison. So that's the encounter. I think it goes there. And now we have the poison as well. So we're going to roll, see if we get rid of poison. And, okay, poison's gone. So that's good. So Bruner's no longer poisoned. Okay, so the poison's gone. The curse is gone. And we have a forced encounter because the uh, we're not exploring. No villain, and then the troll will activate. Now, instead of taking the encounter, though, we have this card on top. So we're going to draw this card instead of the encounter and discard that. So, yes, we had an encounter, but it was canceled. So now the... Feral Troll will activate. And if it's within one tile, it certainly is. It moves adjacent to the closest hero. It's already adjacent to Bruner. And attacks that hero with a nasty claw. Alright, so it's going to attack Bruner. Unless there's anything we can do to stop that from happening. Nothing we can do to stop that from happening. So... Bruner is going to get attacked with a plus eight, and let's really hope that misses. So we'll roll the dice a couple times, pass it in, and oh man, nat 20. So yep, that's a hit. And we don't have a re-roll, so that's just going to hit Bruner for three, and, and move the hero two tiles. I assume it means like away. Boy, that's a tough one. So Bruner takes three hits, taking him down to four. But we do have this potion of healing, so I'm going to say... Uh, so he gets moved two tiles away, so we're going to say, you know, one, two. Let's put him here. But this doesn't specify that it has to be used at any particular time. Uh, actually, yeah, it does. It has to be used during the hero phase, so never mind. We can't use it just yet. All right, so that is the end of uh, turn number three. And yeah, 